A driver of a car stopped at a gas station to fill up his gas tank. He looked at his watch, and the time read exactly 3.40 p.m. At this time, he started pumping gas into the tank. At exactly 3.44, the tank was full, and he noticed that he had pumped 10.7 gallons. What is the average rate of flow of gasoline into the gas tank? All right, so why don't we try to visualize this? So here's the gas tank, all right? And let's just say, you know, there's a certain uh, nozzle in the tank or whatever, and there's a certain flow rate here of volume of gasoline into this gas tank. And right now, before anything is filled, all right, he looks at his watch and he records the time and it says 3, 340. Okay. Now what happens is a little while later, let's copy this image, a little while later, put it over here now, a little while later, he realizes now that the tank is full. Okay, so we'll just fill this up with uh, some fluid here. And he realizes now the tank is full. All right. And he noticed that it filled with 10.7 gallons. 10.7 gallons. Okay. And he also noticed the time at which this tank just filled up to the top. Right. He noticed on his watch that it is um, 3.44. Okay, so let me just bring this down slightly. Now there's one thing, right? How many gallons of fluid did he start with? It doesn't say, but I mean, it's basically empty, right? We can assume that it's empty, that it started with zero gallons. Okay, now what you're asked to find is the average rate of flow. The average rate of flow, we can have a formula that you can memorize. I wrote it down here all the way at the bottom. If you wanted to remember this, I, I can call this the average flow rate is going to be equal to the change in volume divided by the change in time. That's fine. But this formula is basically derived or an application, I should say, of the average rate of change formula that you've already developed and should have a good understanding of. The average rate of change is simply the slope, right, which is M. And the slope, you know the formula to be change in Y over change in X. So notice the similarities between this and this. They're basically the same thing, except here I'm using volume and here I'm talking about time instead of Y's and X's, right? But they are indeed the same thing, okay? So in this problem, the variable or the volume is the Y basically, and the time is the X. You should also, now you might say, well, how would I know that? If I didn't memorize the formula down here of the average flow rate, how would I know that time should be X and that the volume should be Y. What happens if you flipped it? Well, the fraction would actually be flipped and you'd get the inverse of the really appropriate answer. You should know which is the X variable because you're thinking about what does X represent? X represents the independent variable, right? So the independent variable in this problem is indeed the time, all right? Time is, we can think of it as like the universal independent variable right? It ticks by no matter what. So knowing that, you can then state that this is x and therefore the other variable has to be y, all right? And now you can see how the average flow rate formula comes about. So without further ado, let's do average flow rate. Average, average flow rate is equal to the, is equal to, we'll call it v2 minus v1 over uh, t2 minus t1, all right? So you know, call this V2 if you like, call this V1, and then this would be T2, and then this would be T1. Now, in terms of plugging in the numbers, average flow rate, plug in the volumes. The volume, the second volume was 10.7 gallons. The initial was zero. And now divided by, here's the thing. You have to be careful with what you plug in down here. You can't really plug in this, 344 minus 340. Because this isn't really mathematic. This isn't really a number. It's kind of, I, I mean, it is a number, but you have two different, uh, you have two different units here. This is hours and these are in minutes, right? So you, you can't really subtract. I mean, if you were to subtract these two, you get something, you know, this zero four, and then how do you plug that into the calculator? It just doesn't make any sense. So 
I think in this problem, it's better to just consider what the difference in the time is. So what's the difference between 344 and 340? You would say four minutes, right? So I'm going to write that down down here. Remember that this represents minutes. Four minutes is the difference in time, and this is the difference in gallons. So now when I plug this into the calculator, right, we do 10.07, excuse me, 10.7 divided by 4. And we get about 2.675. So 2.675 gallons per minute. And that is it. That's the answer. That's the average flow rate, a.k.a. the average rate of change. Right, when we compare the volume to the time. And that's it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. If this helped you out at all, hit that subscribe button and tell your friends. Thank you so much.